Doug, you're you're in uh, you're in the middle of this migrant situation in New York, and I I've, I, I want to get your your perspective on this because I find it sort of fascinating to look at from the outside. You know, here and being in Texas, you know, we're used to these stories all the time. The border is obviously a big focus of the news on a daily basis, even though I'm you know a few hours away from it. It's a huge part of living in Texas, and we're always talking about it. And we've always heard from the Northeast that like, oh, that's, you know, you guys are just, you guys hate immigrants, you hate migrants, you don't, you, you don't like people that look different than you. And it's always been a ridiculous argument, but I am fascinated at how quickly this idea of sanctuary cities and we're welcoming people has disintegrated the second a few buses showed up in New York. What's it like there right now and, and what's the view on the ground? Uh, Mubar is a phrase we use on the radio, messed up beyond all recognition for radio purposes, obviously. Of course. But like, take Erie County, for example, out Buffalo Way. Two months ago, their county executive said, we're a welcoming community. We will make sure everybody is treated properly, is housed, and they're going to become part of the fabric of our community. Less than two months later, they called in the National Guard and said, that's it, no more. Everything we said is now inoperable. We're moving on. You know, here, about five miles up the road from East, there was a town called Rotterdam. So some migrants were bussed up in the middle of the night. Let me give you a kind of idea of the place that they bussed them to. When the vans came up earlier that day to get the people that were in there out, because, of course, we had to kick Americans out of the hotel to make room for these migrants, right? Mm. So when the vans showed up, people thought, and the rumor was, that they were getting them out of the hotel because they were going to raise the hotel. And everybody was like, yeah, that makes sense. No, it turned out they were just moving migrants into it. It's that kind of place. If you went there right now, Stu, what you would see is police tape and a rope all the way around the front entrance to the parking lot, because apparently it's not a sanctuary hotel. You and I can't get in there. Only the migrants can. Walls for the migrants, apparently, but not for us is the deal. And here's the kicker in it. In Rotterdam, 30 years ago, a young boy was hit by an ice cream truck, and they banned ice cream trucks in Rotterdam. I probably needn't tell you, Stu, what was in Rotterdam last week for the migrant children only? They had an ice cream truck in the parking lot and the kids were out there going, mm -hmm, lovely SpongeBob pop. No one in Rotterdam can get those, but the migrant kids can because the rules don't apply to them in any way, shape or form. You've got to be kidding me. I, no, I wish I was. This is really incredible. And like, look, New York is has made its, you know, these statements of, we're accepting, we want people to come here, we're en encouraging it, we're not gonna be like these other areas. And I'm fascinated because I honestly, like, as a person who watches this every day, and I know you watch it closely as well, Doug, when the busing started, to me it felt very stuntish. Like, I kinda liked that it made a point that I agreed with, but it was just like a, almost like a political stunt. Hey, why don't you guys have to deal with some of this problem for now? I'm fascinated at how everyone in New York, in Chicago, in D.C., they seem to have no ability to figure out how to do anything with this problem. I, I don't understand how someone like Kathy Hochul makes it through the day when she is on television and seemingly constantly talking about how she can't do this. She can't figure it out. Eric Adams can't figure it out. No one can figure out how to deal with this problem that everyone on the border in the South has had to deal with this entire time. So Kathy Ockel, our governor, made this big pronouncement on Friday last week. And the big pronouncement was that she wrote a very terse letter to Joe Biden saying he's got to step up. And of course, the White House responded and said, pound sand, take it up with Congress, because everybody's pointing fingers at everybody else. Meanwhile, Adams is in Israel right now. He's not even here to be part of this scrum. But she's pointing fingers at Adams. She's pointing fingers at Greg Abbott, the Texas governor. And now she's pointing fingers at Biden. Meanwhile, nothing's getting done. But everyone's going, oh, look at the leadership of Kathy Hochul. She sent out a really terse letter. It's a joke, Stu. I mean, to say the emperor has no clothes is an insult to clothes at this point, because we all knew this was how this was going to go. But to see it just disintegrate so rapidly in front of your face, Mer Eric Adams down in New York City, there's this right to shelter rule that they passed in the city that said anyone that is in New York City's boundaries has a right to shelter. Adams said a couple of weeks ago, that's nice. We're done with that. We're not sheltering anybody else anymore. And until we get some people out of here, nobody's welcome. 
It was when he was running for office, he put out this big tweet saying, I will forever uphold our sanctuary city status. And now he literally is saying no one is welcome anymore. And they're acting like they still have the moral high ground in all of this. That's what's crazy about it. Kathy Oakle was ripping Greg Abbott going, it's this cheap political stunt that he did. And I'm like, well, who does he get to blame? Because he didn't ask for these people either. And he's getting them tenfold from what we're getting at least. But it doesn't matter. They all just go, ooh, that's a good point. Yeah, and they give a golf clap. And like somehow that solves anything. Yeah, I, I mean, first of all, obviously a right to shelter law is already, it starts with ridiculous, right? Like you don't know what's gonna happen in your society. You could, all, you could try to do the best you can to shelter people, but if something like this happens, you're not gonna be able to shelter everyone. It's a stupid law to begin with. And like, I, I think it's interesting to dig into how this is happening as well, because at the beginning, yes, it was, you know, it was actually uh, Ducey in Arizona, as well as uh, Abbott in Texas, and you know, a little bit from DeSantis in Florida, of people busing migrants and, and flying them up north. But when the border situation was breaking down a few months ago, the Biden administration made a very specific policy change, which basically to uh, to alleviate the pressure at the actual border, they started talking about allowing people to fly into the cities directly and, and basically incentivized migrants to instead of going to the border and going through that process, just fly into New York, fly into Chicago. You'll be dealt with there. And because there won't be a big buildup, it will be easier and we can just release you into society. So this is happening from all over Central America. They're just flying directly in to these cities from uh, South American cities. And the, the government is allowing this to happen. Instead of trying to make the policies harder on the border, they're just saying skip the border entirely and fly directly to Albany. And now you guys have to deal with it. And it's the whole situation is breaking down even faster than it was before. Kathy Hochul is writing letters to the White House saying, we need work permits waived. We need the 60 day, 90 day and six month waiting period so we can figure out who these people are. We want those waived so they can start working immediately. And people are all going, well, wait a second. If they start working immediately, isn't everybody in Texas going to tell Greg Abbott, we want to get to New York now. We're going to have hundreds of thousands more coming up here <laughs> if that were to happen. Somehow Biden understands that, but Kathy Hochul doesn't. And that's their big play, that if these guys somehow are allowed to work right now instead of waiting. I'll give you an example of why that's stupid, Stu. So today, the, the attorney general in New York, Tish James, I think you know Tish James, oh, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. She issued an edict on what the education policy is going to be for these migrant children, because isn't that what the attorney general does is education policy now. Of course. But the Department of Education wouldn't offer up any guidance. So she did. And what she said is, regardless of the, if they can prove residency, regardless of how they got here, and regardless of their vaccinations and immunization shots, we were told everybody was vetted multiple times, but now they're saying, regardless of their shot status, they must be schooled, no questions asked. Stu, do you realize just two months ago, at some SUNY state of New York colleges, kids weren't allowed to participate in their own graduations because they didn't want to get the latest round of alleged booster shots? But now kids are forced to go into schools without immunization records at all because we just we can't figure this thing out in any way, shape or form. Everything's flipped on its head. None of it makes any sense. And yet they act like we're on this, though. We've got this. Mm -hmm. uh, Doug, I, I don't want to sit here and just admire the, the problem here because I, I, you know, I can sit here, honestly, just mouth open, just staring at it and just say, I can't believe this. But is there, we got about a minute left, is there anything, what do we do here? I mean, is this just a situation where we are completely unprepared and this is just going to keep spiraling out of control? Or is there something that someone can do to stop this? Somebody was saying, you know, the, the preachy Northeast liberals all have all the answers all the time until you actually call them on it. Your governor and, and the governor of Arizona in particular did that. And now they're like, no, so what do they do? They double that on and you guys are the problem. D.C. has no answers. New York City has no answers. Chicago has no answers. I mean, Stu, until the presidential election, I think this is going to continue. Biden has shown you 
in Harris to a lesser extent, they have no interest in doing any heavy lifting whatsoever here. And the answer always is with the hard left is if you just throw enough money at it, somehow it's magic fairy dust that will make all the problems go away. They're spending billions of dollars. Eric Adams is asking for $6 billion from the state right now just for the migrants we have. What do you think? I keep telling people, what happens if we actually do assimilate these people in any meaningful way? You think that's going to be the end of it? Here comes triple that. How much? I, I mean, it's going to bankrupt us unless you get something out of D.C. But as I've told you many times, too, when you look to D.C. for guidance, you're in a pretty bad pickle, aren't you? Because there isn't going to be much coming. Remember who's down in D.C., for example, Dan Goldman from New York, George Santos from New York, Chuck Schumer from New York. I mean, that's who's running that place. So where do you turn for answers? You know, in New York, you're not sending us your best. You're sending us, uh, I don't know who you're sending us, but they, they don't represent New York very well. Uh, Doug Gowdy, host of WGY Mornings with Doug Gowdy. Uh, great show and uh, always great perspective coming from New York. Doug, thanks so much for coming on the program. Always appreciate you, Stu. Thanks.